I still don't understand. What's it all about? Did you ever hear of a man named Jackson Smith? Jackson Smith? Hmm. Good. He's here in town. He's staying at the Kilburn Hotel. And? Well, he's quite a sportsman. Golf, tennis, yachting, flies his own plane. So? He has a stolen strip of microfilm. Why send for me? You have plenty of men. <laughs> so far, Jackson Smith has spotted every one of them. We've never been able to get very far. Interesting man, this Smith. Mike. This microfilm is top draw security. We want to know who he sells or delivers it to. It could mean a big difference at the peace conference. You want in? You have any idea who might want to buy the film? Too many to narrow it down. Smith gets around quite a lot. But anyone we've seen him talking to would have a tough job getting a passport. I have a big curiosity. You say he's staying at the Kilburn Hotel. Remember, Mike, this film is vital. And you're on your own. On my own. That's a familiar phrase. of Jackson Smith. He liked an old-fashioned game called Gin Rummy, and he won, naturally. I was his pigeon, and there is no friend like a pigeon. When Jackson Smith suddenly announced that he was going to fly to Los Angeles, he agreed to take me with him. He felt, I think, that what money I had left, he could remove in Los Angeles. I didn't play hard to get. Six hours later, we were over San Bernardino when the motor started coughing. Smith started circling, looking for a place to sit down. Smith made his forced landing, only he wasn't lucky. He died a few minutes later. I guessed a broken rib had pierced his heart. He'll be waiting in, in Hollywood. Griffith Park. He'll find you if you wear my cap. Name's Rim. Nobody else. Oh. The motor failed and we had to make a landing. We made such a good landing that I survived. Smith wasn't so fortunate. That's about all, huh? Thank you. Let's get to the ball, yeah. Right away. Make a nice story. Thanks for coming up. If I was right, whoever wanted the film would find me as soon as the newspapers hit the street. I thought everyone had gone. Bill Colder, Chronicle. Just who was Jackson Smith? Huh? Oh, he was a fellow I met. He offered to fly me to Los Angeles. That's all I know about him. Leonard, I'm a newspaper man. I do the best job I can. Maybe I'm wrong, but there's something about your story I can't go along with. I'm going to start digging, and I don't care what bodies I discover. Dig all you like. Only do me a favor, will you? If you find anything, tell me. How would you excuse me? No hard feelings? No hard feelings. Everyone has a job to do. How about one for the road? Sure, help yourself. Being slugged isn't so bad. A light goes out and you're dead. It's coming back to life, but hurts. You look at your watch, but you don't see what the hands say. You 
It might be next week. I looked at the golf ball. It was marked Griffith Park. I knew by the look of my room that Calder hadn't found anything. The golf ball was an invitation, but I couldn't help wondering if there wasn't an easier way to send for someone. My head still ached, but the next day I took off for the golf course in Griffith Park. To make it look good, I borrowed a set of clubs from a friend of mine. I went over the names again. Jackson Smith, who died, a phony Bill Calder, I owed him something, and the man Jackson had called Rim. I knew one thing for sure. I was going to enjoy meeting him. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I had the feeling that someone was watching me. If I was right, whoever it was wouldn't have to wait long. Apparently, we shall go around together. My name is Groom, Lawrence Groom. How are you? I'm sort of a duffer, you know. I never broke a hundred in my life. I know how you feel. I never broke 65. How close did you get to it? Within 40 strokes. <laughs> Can we get this contest on the road? Lawrence Groom and I had played two holes. He didn't say much, but it seemed to me that he chose each word with great care. I didn't particularly like him. I kept wondering about a man called Rim. I don't know why, but I keep on thinking I have seen you somewhere before. Oh, you possibly have. Where? I have no idea. London? Possibly, yeah. Paris? Could be. Istanbul? You've been around, Mr. Groom, haven't you? I have a peculiar question to ask you, Mr. Lanyon. Well, a peculiar question is usually an interesting one. Go ahead. Before he died, just what did Jackson Smith tell you? You read the newspapers. Oh, yes. But I think something else must have happened. Do you often have hallucinations, Mr. Groom? Uh, what? Do you often imagine things that never actually happened? Rarely, very rarely, Mr. Lanyon. Practically never. On the way from the green to the next tee, Mr. Groom came right to the point. He had intended to do business with Smith. This was no longer possible. Smith was dead. He assumed that Smith had turned over the microfilm to me. He wanted to buy it. He had just asked me my price. Well? Assuming I do have the microfilm, Mr. Groom, how much would you care to pay? $50,000. It's worth much more. I see you are prepared to drive a hard bargain, Mr. Lanyard. I love hard bargains. My government wants the microfilm, so I'm prepared to pay you $250,000. I had nothing to lose and lots to gain. Groom felt I knew much more than I did. A good bluff sometimes works. At least it was worth a try. Your offer is exactly half as much as another group is prepared to pay. You're a very smart man, Mr. Lanyard. When I sent Coulter to you, he didn't find the film, yet the golf ball brought you to me. I think you're bluffing. My offer is still $250,000, and I suggest that you accept it. I'm a businessman, Mr. Groom. I'm willing to do business, but not at bargain prices. Think it over, Mr. Lanyard. I would hate you to meet a terrible accident. First it was a cap, then it was a golf ball, and now a bag of peanuts. Griffith Park is a big heap of hill, with a Greek theater, a fern dell, a planetarium where one can learn about planets, and a zoo. The peanuts could mean a lot of things, but a zoo was good enough for the first guess. Camels have as many curves as a calendar girl. The only trouble is, 
they aren't where they ought to be. While I was considering this melancholy fact, I caught sight of Bill Calder. It would have been a pleasure to have gone back and kicked his teeth down his throat. But it was wise to postpone it, at least for the moment. I was fraternizing with an unfortunate tiger when I recognized my golf partner, Lawrence Groom, a few feet away from me. I decided my best strategy was to sit down on a bench and let them make the next move. May I help you? There used to be a bench somewhere near here. There still is. Here. Thank you very much. My name is Rim. It matches the insignia on your cap. Glad to know you. Do you have it with you? You mean, of course, the film, huh? Please do not try to be amusing. Have you a car? Yes. It's in the parking lot. Good. Rim wasn't blind. When he had handed me the card, his head had instinctively followed my hand. What seems to be the trouble? I think we're being watched. What makes you think so? I thought I recognized two men. Groom and Calder. Groom and Calder? Where did you meet them? I didn't. They met me. What did they want? Groom made me an offer for the microphone. Mr. Lanyard, you are not trying to pull a double cross. If I were, would I have looked for you? Yes. Groom has always given us trouble. He wants this film so that he can make a deal with our government. It sounded as though Groom wanted it for his own government. He will not like it. Who? Are you sure it was Groom and Calder? Yeah. He will not like it. Let's go, huh? It was clear that Rim was worried about Groom and Calder. Rim had just used the pronoun he. Whoever he was, he was Rim's boss. I wanted to get everyone out in the open, including the man Rim called he. I had an idea, and I hoped it would work. Not too fast. We've got a tail. I want to make sure they follow us. All right. Let us go. Where do we go? Let's follow this road right up to the planetarium. He told me to keep my hands on the wheel. His eyes were glued to the cars behind us. I thought about how this whole crazy thing had started. How men are driven by insane urge for power. The strip of microfilm must have been terribly important. So important that the man with me would kill for it. I thought about the words I had heard. The microfilm might mean a big difference at the peace conference. I knew only one thing. Rim, Calder, Groom, and the man called He were in for a big surprise. Rim was becoming frantic. He asked me to drive faster. I did. He started talking. He talked fast. He told me that his orders were to get the film from me and then to kill me. He begged if I could shake the cars behind me, he'd make a deal. He'd just take the film and let me live. I wasn't interested in Rim's offer, but I wanted to meet his boss. I told Rim that I'd try to lose the cars by heading for the planetarium. I told him to hold on.
behind it caught Calder and Groom, flat-footed. I headed down the road for the tunnel, and I hoped I was right. I told Rim I'd go through the tunnel, park for a few minutes, and then head for wherever he wanted to go. He didn't say much, but I knew he agreed. But even the best laid plans of men go amiss. I hadn't lost them. I could see Calder's car heading into the tunnel. on the top of the planetarium. He does not expect you. He will be waiting. He... said he was waiting on the top of the planetarium, and I knew he was watching. No one likes the feeling of walking into a handful of death. I didn't feel any differently. Funny what you think about when you know you're in trouble. Nowhere to go but straight ahead. I wondered who he really was. I wondered if he had a curiosity. At least I hoped he had a curiosity. I knew now why he had chosen this spot. It's like an ancient fortress. No one can approach it without being seen, and I thought it was a long approach. A very long approach. Behind your head, please. Where is Rim, Mr. Lanyard? He's down in my car. He's dead. And did you kill him? No. Who then? Called his playmate. A man named Groom. Where is Groom now? Outside the tunnel. If I was lucky, he's dead. I hope you were lucky. And what of his helper, the man named Colder? He left when the going got rough. Who are you? My name is Chu. You have the film. What film, Mr. Chu? Mr. Lanyard, you don't seem to understand. The microfilm is very important to us. I have traveled a great distance to receive it. Two of our best men have been killed, Smith and Rim. It has been a very trying experience for me. Now, if you will hand me the film, let's not waste each other's time. I don't know anything about the film. Mr. Lanyard, I don't believe you. The cap, please. Sure. Joe is asleep for the moment. Groom may be asleep permanently, but where is Calder?
I looked at the broken body of Calder, and I thought, better you than me. I got your present, Mike. How'd you find it? Well, Jackson Smith thought I was a pigeon. When he was dying, he told me to wear his cap. Said it would be recognized. After he died, I found the film in the cap. And? So I mailed it to you and just kept going. Tell me about Chu. Well, in his own country, he was a very big man. But once you're associated with a failure, you no longer have any value to them, so... Mm. I'm curious. That microfilm, what was on it? Well, that is a loaded question. Blueprints of a new weapon, that's about all I can tell you. Oh, that's plenty. Mind if I keep this in remembrance of one Jackson Smith? <laughs> I'll remember something, too. The fact that you have a big curiosity. A very big curiosity. And, uh, thanks, Mike. <laughs>